On this episode of Hackbyte, we're gonna visualize the relationship between Wi-Fi devices using a tool called AirGraphNG. The Aircrack NG suite contains a variety of Wi-Fi hacking tools, and in a previous video, I showed you how we can use one of these tools called AeroDump in order to gather some basic Wi-Fi reconnaissance. This reveals a lot of information like data passing between a network and its connected clients, if something like your smartphone is trying to connect to a network it's seen before, as well as a lot of other really revealing information about your wireless devices. Today, we're gonna take a look at how some of this information can be processed through a tool called Airgraph NG, which will essentially let us create a visual representation of the relationship between some of these devices. We can create a graph that shows us the interconnectedness of Wi-Fi access points and their clients, as well as some devices that might be subject to attack based off previous networks that they've connected to before. To follow along, all you're gonna need is a monitor mode enabled Wi-Fi dongle, as well as a Linux computer. To begin, we're going to install a suite of Wi-Fi hacking tools called AirCrackNG. So this will let us do things like be able to gather wireless reconnaissance, as well as also run some basic Wi-Fi attacks. We're gonna be taking a look at how we can analyze a capture file generated from one of these programs called AeroDump, and also visualize it in a tool called AirGraph. So to begin, we're gonna install the AirCrack suite just by running sudo apt install aircrack-ng in a Linux terminal. Now, after AirCrack installs, we can go ahead and install the second tool just by running sudo apt install airgraph-ng. Now, if you're not able to install AirGraph via the apt repository, you can also check out the alternative installation instructions, which you can find on this site here, which I'll also link in the video description that shows you how to build and compile the AirGraph tool from scratch, so you'll be able to follow along with today's demonstration. Once you have both of these things set up, we can get started capturing Wi-Fi packets and also visualizing it through AirGraph. The first step in this process is to first enable monitor mode on our wireless dongle. This will allow us to pull in Wi-Fi packets freely and basically get an idea of all of the Wi-Fi information and conversations that are happening around us. So we can do this by using a tool that comes with AirCrack called AirmonNG. So I can first start up AirmonNG by running sudo airmon-ng, and this will list out all of the Wi-Fi interfaces that we have available at our disposal. So as you can see here, I have my built-in wireless card available at this physical address here, as well as this Wi-Fi dongle that I have plugged in over USB, which I should be able to enable monitor mode on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this interface address, and we're gonna start up monitor mode on this device just by running sudo airmon-ng, followed by start, and then the interface name. So as you can see here, the device has now been renamed to denote that it's been enabled with monitor mode, and I can go ahead and just type the first command one more time, which is sudo airmon-ng. And as you can see, we have this indicator that this device has now been enabled with monitor mode. So now that we have our Wi-Fi dongle set up, the next step is to go ahead and actually start capturing data packets. So we're gonna do this by using a program called AeroDumpNG, which I covered in the last video. So using AeroDumpNG, we're able to do things like holistically capture Wi-Fi data coming in over 2.4 gigahertz or the five gigahertz spectrum, or more specifically hone in on one device that we might want to attack, say for instance, a specific Wi-Fi network, and be able to only capture information that's coming in over that specific channel at that specific MAC address. Now, if you want more information on how you can apply some of these filters, make sure you check out that video where I go into a little more detail on how you can use the AeroDump NG tool to meet your Wi-Fi reconnaissance needs. For today's demonstration, we're gonna be taking a look at a capture file that I generated using parameters that I covered in the last video in order to surveil devices on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrum. So taking a look at these capture files that I actually pre-generated, you can see here I have a list of various different file types that were generated through AeroDumpNG. Now, if you similarly wanted to capture something like this, I'll briefly cover the parameters that you'll need in order to interface with AeroDumpNG. So you can do this just by running sudo AeroDump-NG, followed by the name of your Wi-Fi card, which as we covered earlier was wlan 0 mon and then any other parameters that you want to use with this program. So for instance, um, I wanted to capture on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, so I had to indicate that by running tac tac band, A, B, and G. And then finally, I had to denote to write this out to a capture file with the tac w parameter for write, and then the name of the files that we wanted to capture to, which in my case here would be dual band. So I could do this as tac w dual band. 
Now, of course, if you wanted to say capture information on a specific channel, you could also do that by adding other parameters like taxi per channel and say channel six, or even scope in on a specific Wi-Fi device by adding the TACTAC VSSID parameter to add a MAC address of some random device that you wanted to target or a whole list of other parameters that allow you to optimize your reconnaissance. Now for this example, I just set it as a generic capture on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrum. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this name real quick. But if you see the output of the Aerodump NG capture, you can see it basically starts channel hopping between all the different channels on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and it'll save it out to the following capture file that's generated under these variations of test. Now we're gonna be taking a look at the capture files that I generated from a previous session, which as I mentioned is named here as dual band. And I'm first gonna take a look at the different file types that we have available to us generated by default through AeroDumpNG. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run ls grep dual. And as you can see, I have a list of all the different file types that are available to us from the default capture. So for example, we have this .cap file, which contains all of the network traffic that was captured from this specific reconnaissance session. So we can do things like analyze specific websites that a user might have visited by opening this up in a program like Wireshark, assuming that you've cracked the WPA key. We also have other file capture types like CSV files, which are a little more human readable and also programmatically readable. So we're able to pull a file like this into something like Python and be able to easily visualize the data that was captured by Aerodome. We also have these other file formats here, which are Kismet files that we can use for things like war driving in order to determine the physical location of some of where these Wi-Fi devices were spotted at and be able to tie them to certain geolocation attributes. Now we're gonna be focusing on this .csv file here, which as I mentioned is a human readable file and also one of the most ubiquitous ways to store information. So taking a look at the raw capture file, we're able to easily open up this CSV file in a program like Excel or LibreOffice. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to parse through this information and be able to quickly determine attributes about a Wi-Fi device, such as the encryption type of this specific device or Wi-Fi network, the time that this device was spotted at, the channel it's operating at, the speed it was operating at, as well as a lot of other useful information. Now, while it's great to have all of this information, it might not be readily understandable or easy to interpret just by looking at it at a glance. This is why having data visualization tools like AirGraph come in super handy for being able to quickly look at this information and be able to make sense of it through graphical representations like the format we're gonna take a look at in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this CSV file and we're gonna head back over to my terminal. Now using the AirGraph NG tool, we're gonna to take a look at how we can process some of these capture files and generate a graph that allows us to quickly determine the topology of a network in order to see what devices are associated with a certain Wi-Fi access point. So I can do this by running sudo airgraph-ng and we're gonna go ahead and pass the TACI parameter with the location of the CSV file. So TACI stands for input and we're gonna go ahead and pass the CSV file, which is at dual band-01.csv. And then we're gonna tell AirGraph to go ahead and output a file after processing it over to, um, let's do capture.png. Finally, we're gonna add one more parameter, which is tacg, which indicates the type of graph to create. So the first graph we're gonna take a look at is CAPR or client access point relationship. So I can just type CAPR. And as the name indicates, this is going to create a graph that allows us to visualize the relationship between the devices we spotted, seeing which ones are client devices, and indicating in a web which networks that these devices are connected to. So if I go ahead and head over to my files, I can open up the generated capture.png file, and you can immediately see that this is a whole lot more palatable than the raw CSV text file that we were taking a look at earlier. We're able to immediately determine and distinguish the difference between Wi-Fi networks and also their associated client devices, as well as some pretty basic information about them just at a glance. So scrolling in here to one of these green bubbles, for instance, you can see a Wi-Fi network that has WPA2 encryption, showing us that these might be a little more secure compared to other Wi-Fi networks, such as this pretty vulnerable WEP network, which is susceptible to a lot of common Wi-Fi attacks. We can also determine open Wi-Fi networks, for instance, by this red little blurb over here, which shows us an open Wi-Fi access point that currently has two Wi-Fi devices that are currently connected to it. So as you can see, this is a really quick way to gauge what Wi-Fi networks are picked up by our capture, as well as the Wi-Fi devices that are connected to some of these networks. So if we wanted to do something like fingerprint a Wi-Fi network and see what Wi-Fi devices are currently connected to that network, this would be a really easy way to do that and also gleam some pretty basic information and attributes about these devices. 
So scrolling in, for instance, on one of these devices, we're able to see things like the device's MAC address, as well as also the manufacturer of some of these devices. Using something called the OUI prefix, or the first three octets of a MAC address, which is going to be the unique hardware address of any Wi-Fi device, we're able to determine the manufacturer of these devices, and basically identify the types of hardware someone might be using on their network. For instance, if we just wanted to snoop in on our neighbors and see what kind of devices they have connected, for instance, IoT devices, we're able to determine a whole load of information like the specific vendor type of their phones, laptops, or other personal devices. So as I mentioned, this can also be used for things like determining if a network might have vulnerable IoT devices connected to it and possible attack vectors by looking for vulnerable devices at a quick glance. Looking at another example here, you can see we have access to a network with no encryption set up that seems to be coming from an Apple device. So this might be something like a smartphone that has a hotspot set up that currently has one connected client, and we could potentially do something like sniff network traffic between them due to the easy accessibility since there's currently no barrier to entry in order to connect to this Wi-Fi network. Now, while being able to use this client access point relationship graph is super handy for determining the topology of various networks and their connected devices, if we wanted to see other devices that might not be connected to Wi-Fi or any other network at the moment are currently not included on this graph. Taking a look at the second graph type available to us through AirGraph, we're gonna see how we can visualize these unconnected devices as well as also look out for some potential attack vectors by determining what networks these devices are trying to connect to. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another graph type, which is gonna be denoted as CPG for common probe graph. So I'm also gonna save this to the same capture file, which you're gonna see reload in a second. And as you can see here, there's a whole lot less visual distinction between the networks and client devices that are currently presented to us. That's because these are actually generated from things called probe requests, which are not real Wi-Fi networks that are detected in the area. So as I mentioned, these are actually devices we're looking at that are currently not connected to any Wi-Fi network, but are sending out a type of Wi-Fi packet type called a probe request. So when a device like your laptop or cell phone is not connected to the internet, it'll be searching for networks that it's seen before by noisily shouting out for these network names and hoping that it spots one of these networks nearby, attempting to authenticate to any of these networks if the network name happens to be spotted. So for example, you can see we have this Apple device here, which is clearly connected to this Wanderlust Creamery at Water network before, and is basically probing for this network name, hoping that it can spot this network in its vicinity to connect to it and establish a Wi-Fi connection. Thanks to reconnaissance tools like AeroDump, we're able to pick up on these probe requests and basically see all of the Wi-Fi network names that these devices are shouting out. And we can do something like create a list of these different Wi-Fi networks that can be potentially used for sneaky Wi-Fi attacks. So you can see here, we have a variety of different Wi-Fi network names that these unconnected devices are currently searching out for. And if an attacker were to create a fake Wi-Fi access point, with the same name as one of these Wi-Fi networks, these devices could be tricked into authenticating with this fake access point, since it determines that this network is trusted having connected to it before, and quickly determine vulnerable devices based off their attributes, and potentially leverage some of this information against them through a variety of different attack methods. Whether you're conducting a pen test or want to see what weird IoT devices your neighbor has connected to their home network, the AirGraph NG tool is perfect for this application and for being able to visualize this sort of data. If you're interested in seeing more videos on AirCrack NG, let us know in the comments below what tools you want to see covered, or reach out to me on Twitter at Alex Lind, and I will be sure to include them in upcoming episodes. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.